Hey guys, it's Josh Chamberlain with Chamberlain Antiques, and today we're going to look at both Chinese and Japanese cloisonne. Roll intro. Cloisonne is a technique in which metal vessels are decorated with bent wires or cloisons, creating a design. These designs are then filled in with colored enamel and fired, causing the enamel to melt and spread out, covering the entire piece. After a few firings, the piece is then sanded and polished, revealing that wire design underneath. Although there are examples of cloisonne showing up in China during the Yuan Dynasty, cloisonne really hit the scene in the 15th century. The earliest examples were simple floral designs, and they had use of a limited palette. As the technique became more refined during the 16th and 17th century, the designs became more elaborate and would sometimes include dragons and figures. Over time, the detail and intricacy of the wire work improved, and during the 18th century you'll find Chinese cloisonne to be far more detailed and use a wider array of colors. Now let's have a look at some of the common characteristics you'll find with Chinese cloisonne. In the earlier examples, you will often see the use of light blue enamel as the base color. Also in these earlier examples, any exposed metal including the wires and often the undersides were finished with gilt. Often the case with pieces from the 18th century and later, the background enamel or ground is often accented with a wire design. If we look at this piece here, you will see a design of waves surrounding the duck and lotus. And with this piece over here, you will see a diapered pattern giving depth to the background instead of just a smooth base enamel. The borders on a piece of cloisonne are always important to look at. On the earliest Chinese examples, the borders were usually made up of flowers and scroll work. On later pieces, you can find bands of rui, which are similar to the shape of a heart. Another border you'll commonly find on pieces of Chinese cloisonne is what's referred to as a key fret or Greek key design, which are these geometric patterns that almost look like intertwined S's. Most pieces of Chinese cloisonne are not marked. When markings are found, they usually refer to a specific emperor rather than the artist who made a piece. Keep in mind this does not necessarily mean a piece was made during that time period, as a specific emperor's mark was often used long after he was gone. Now we're going to have a look at Japanese cloisonne. There are examples of Japanese cloisonne dating back as far as some of the earliest Chinese examples. But for this video, I just want to focus on when production was in its prime during the 19th and early 20th century. There are a few styles of decoration of Japanese cloisonne from this time period you should remember when trying to identify a piece. The first we're going to look at is an intricate network of various shapes, small flowers or butterflies, and geometric designs. Oftentimes, these will be done on a dark enamel or an enamel filled with gold flecks, with various colors and shapes covering the entire piece. The next style of decoration we're going to look at are scenes done on a solid enamel ground. Sometimes an entire piece will display a single scene like this vase here. You can also find examples like this one here that displays large panels where the background is a solid color. One variation you'll find in this style of decoration is called jambari. Jambari is when an embossed foil is placed on the body and then finished with a translucent enamel revealing the embossed design underneath. Similar to this, you can also find embossed silver examples finished with translucent enamels. This is referred to as basai tai. Here we see a very fine example done by master artist Kawaguchi Banzaman. The last style of Japanese cloisonne we're going to look at is referred to as totai cloisonne. Totai is when the enamel is adhered to a piece of porcelain rather than a copper or metal base. These pieces are generally decorated in the same motifs as traditional Japanese cloisonne, with the exception of one style referred to as tree bark totai. As we mentioned earlier, borders are very important in helping you identify a piece of cloisonne. 
there are a few borders that we commonly find on Japanese examples. Borders on Japanese cloisonne are often made up of intricate geometric patterns like you see here. Also, many times you will find a small ring of circles surrounding the reserves on Japanese examples. So that was your rundown on Chinese and Japanese cloisonne. Hopefully you learned a few things and you feel better equipped next time you come across a piece at your local antique show or flea market. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you have any questions, you can reach us at chamberlainantiques.com or feel free to comment below. Hello, my name is Josh. Action. 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 I failed. <laughs> how, do you, dude, how do you mess up a clap? Identify a piece of cloisonne. That was Francais. Identify a piece of cloisonne. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> no! Taco Bell, Taco Bell, and some fire chicken. Fire chicken. I won't. I won't lie to you. I got. I got. I have things going on all over my body right now. <laughs>